Hi Floss Tube. Flossmas day three. Welcome. <laughs> Thank you so much. Again, I've had loads of really positive comments and yeah, steam rollering on from yesterday. I'm really enjoying doing a little video every day. It's much earlier in the day today. It is 1.24 here in the UK in the afternoon and I've got a little while here to uh, record this before I need to run out to school to pick up my big girls and we're gonna go and get chicken food, ferret food and snake food and we'll get a drive through Costa on the way home as our wee treat for the week. Costa's a UK based um, coffee shop. Uh, it's got really mild coffee. I don't like, I find Starbucks a bit too harsh for me so I'm really pleased that we now have two drive through Costas in our little city so that's great for me. Anyway, welcome very welcome um yeah fab so um i have a finish after i finished filming yesterday i sat down and i put the picture up on instagram a little bit before midnight last night because i have finished the christmas hair there he is i just i just loved him so much i had to finish him and I was getting a little tired and I thought, no, just there's just so little left to go just to finish. So a bar, this tiny little bit of green here that I had stitched, I think the night before, I did all of that yesterday. So I just sat from when the video had finished and, you know, you put it down, you go and sort people out, you go and get this, you have a cup of coffee, you go and see, see the cat, you know, and it and by there it is it's done so I'm gonna get that cut off here tonight and I'm going to put it on a bit of a piece of board and Robin will make me a frame for it and then by and by it'll be just there up on the wall so I've got lots of space left on this big piece of fabric which is actually quite a small piece of fabric but you know what because I started right in the very very corner I've got a nice big space um, I used none of the called for threads I just pulled from the floss bag of doom which i will explain and i just used for the there's three stars and for his collar i used the spool of krynek that i bought here it is it's very fine braid very fine braid 002 hl which is high luster in that very bright gold which i find a bit of a pig to stitch with it doesn't doesn't make super neat stitches but it does give it a little bit of extra sparkle which on the sparkliest fabric in the world is fine too so there it is that's my first Christmas finish and number one's done so I didn't put any more stitches into um, my patchwork deer I'm, I'm, I'm just looking at it because it's over there and my patchwork deer is exactly where it was yesterday this is what I'll pick up tonight I am sure and and then I'll use my other Q-snap to put in the other Barbara Anna and we'll carry on. So I'm casting around looking for another Christmas project to do. I have a full coverage pattern that I got from my bobbin.com called Festive Beetle. I'm looking into that possibly to do, to start a full coverage and then I got the email from Marie's Cross Stitch that my Kingdom of Books has been dispatched. So I hope I'll have that to show you tomorrow because I'm really hoping it's going to come in the post tomorrow. It didn't come today, but then I only got the dispatch yesterday, so it should really be tomorrow. So I'm really hoping, fingers crossed, that it comes in the post. I can show it to you and I can start it. And then, of course, anything else will just be going out of the window because I'll just be stitching on that. So... The advent, sorry, I'm going to reach over there. The advent, I did number three's little pillow. There we go. Or the stitching for number three's pillow. So I've got the little owl. He's on a little stand. That's what he's on on the pattern. It's like a, almost like a little birdie table. So there's a little owl and there's a little heart. It's in the white, so you can barely see it. But the person who actually wins the grand prize will be able to see all of these little white bits because they, they stand out much better when they're not on the screen so we are one two three three days three little pillows so we'll see what i do tomorrow 
Okay. So other than that, I'm five minutes in. Ta -da! That's what I've done. Okay. Um, today is a leave your comments if you want today's goodie box. What's in here? We have got uh, it's a white one with a red with a little green button. He's the little hanging guy. And this needle minder is a snowman. Two little boys. Oh, a little boy and a big girl making a snowman with a with a village scene, little church in the background. And the counting pins in this pack are a pink donut and a marshmallow. Don't know if you can see them. They're actually really super. So that's so what because I'm still getting comments from video one and obviously I got comments yesterday. What I'm going to do is when I do write down all the names of people who are entered in, I leave a heart. Some of the comments I've answered anyway, but when I've written down your name, I put a heart. That means you've been included in one of the giveaways. So I've had a couple more comments on video one and I've had comments yesterday on video two. So if you've commented after I drew and you've commented yesterday and if you comment today, I'll write down your names. And if you commented on video two and video three, I'm going to write your name down twice. So you'll go in the dip twice. So if you comment on every video, you get a much better chance. Well, you double your chances, don't you, really? So please keep commenting. Comments are fantastic. Thank you so much for everybody. As I say, you don't need to write me a large comment. L literally a hi or an emoji or something will enter you. You don't have to write anything specific to me. But those of you who are taking the time to write a bit of something to me, is it's lovely. Thank you so much. That's giving me back what I, you know, that's perfect. Thank you. Um, what else can I show you? I've got a couple of things. This morning, um, I'm not working today. I've got a furlough day today. I should have been back at the golf club that is open because uh, we came out of lockdown in England midnight, Tuesday night, between Tuesday and Wednesday. So the golf course reopened, but she decided to keep the clubhouse where I work closed because she can't justify she my lovely boss can't justify the staff costs because we can't we can't gather you can't sit in more than you can't sit with anybody who's not in your family bubble and that's not your support bubble that is your one family house so in our house we're six people and that's us you're not allowed to be inside with anybody who isn't in your family bubble unless you're at work so I can go and work there but nobody can come in unless they're with their own family. Now, golfers go and play in groups of, I think they're allowed out in sixes. I'm not sure if they're only allowed out in fours. They'll be they'll be keeping to the rules, whatever it is. But um, when they finish, if they're not from the same household, and let's face it, a group of mates usually aren't from the same household, they can't come and sit down in the clubhouse and have a cup of coffee they can't have a drink unless they're buying substantial food and they usually have at the most a packet of crisps or a dish of chips which is not a substantial meal so my boss has just said no I'm going to keep the clubhouse closed until the rules change again so I'm on furlough today long story short so I've skipped out about half of the living room collected up a lot of my craft stuff put all the laundry away we're six people we generate a lot of laundry which gets washed and dried and put in baskets and it, when it's when it gets to the put in the basket stage it gets to a halt until I sort it out so I've done that this morning so everybody's got their laundry where it should be and there's a lot more space in the living room now because that's where it gets left um, and then after that I found on my sewing machine table a whole pile of face masks which I hadn't which I'd I'd cut them out and I'd put the lining and the facing together and that's about as far as I'd got. So I have finished a pile of Harry Potter ones. These are for my youngest daughter and her friends. She's going to give them, it's going to give them to her friends for Christmas. So there's one with a Hermione in the middle. There's one with a Harry Potter in the middle. There's a plain old Hogwarts and then 
there's a Gryffindor and Ravenclaw, which are their houses, apparently. How we know, we know not. Anyway, so I finished those. This is a really good pattern, actually, um, that I've finally settled on. I finished off a couple that were still being done. These are like an old pattern with the pleats and the the two the two darts. These sit really tight against your face. They're not so good. So I found a couple that were already made, already cut and made. So I finished them and we'll just, you know, we only wear them for a day, maybe two days if you've not really been out anywhere. But the girls have to wear them in school when they're not in lessons. If they're not in a lesson, they have to wear a mask. So we're changing them out frequently now. So of the fun ones for our family, um, there's a project bag out there made of that. And that one's a really nice, really nice one there. And then here's a couple that I'll show you this pattern. It's actually a really super pattern. It sits, sits like that. So it sits up tight, quite close here. But because it's got the two seams around here, it sits away from, it sits between your mouth and your nose and your chin. So your mouth is clear. So you've not got that tight fabric against. If anyone wants me to, I just, this, this I got from a YouTube tutorial um, and there was a free PDF link to the pattern. So if anyone wants me to link the, the exact tutorial, I will just let me know and I'll link it tomorrow. So there's some diamonds. I was going to make vice binding with this, but I've made some masks as well. So those and that pretty feathers. So that's what I've been doing this morning, stitching up and finishing. And I use hair elastics. I use these narrow. I can't wear these in my hair. I have to, I have to, for my hair, I have to use this size. It's covered in hair. That's gross. This size, big, thick, chunky hair elastics, which aren't good for masks. But when you buy a pack of hair elastics, I want these ones to tie my enormous knot up with. And the little skinny ones, which might, which won't hold my hair or two of my daughter's hair either. I use these in the masks and they are really good, <laughs> really good. And we've got oh, between the lot of us now, we've probably got about three dozen of these and we just chuck them in a you know, like a, a delicates bag, you know, those mesh bags that you're supposed to, you're supposed to wash your undies in. We stick them in one of those, hoi them in the machine, whiz them through. They do need a bit of a press because they come out in a little scrunch and then you try and fit the scrunch on afterwards. Anyway, that's what I've been up to this morning. And while I was tidying up, I found last year, November 2019, I found the cross stitcher from 2019. Isn't she lovely? I think that's what made me buy her, buy this magazine is oh i'm getting a cup of coffee delivery thank coffee, you coffee. coffee 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 thank you very much oh it's hot so i bought this and it still has its freebie kit which makes doesn't even show you on the front what it makes it makes this oh that shiny thing it makes this tree decoration which actually is a cone and I'm not going to stitch this so I will give this away but not today because today's giveaway is a gubbins and I might I might split this up and give away the pattern separately because obviously they're so easy to post but we'll see I might just I might just give away the whole mag I'll have a little look through it first because I'm not sure if there's something I want out of it can't even honestly I can't really remember buying it so but nobody else in this family would have bought a cross stitch magazine so that's what I've been doing this morning I've been tidying up downstairs I've been finishing off a whole pile of masks because I am going to be moving my sewing machine probably to the desk just there just for the period because um, my sewing machine is on a little like flop leaf table that Robin made me and that's right by the door that's in our living room which we don't use um, very much out to the garden because it's chilly out there and a bit nettly um, but that's where Steve goes Steve is my Christmas tree he's been with me 10 years now my Christmas tree Steve and he's in the loft at the moment so he needs rescuing we're I'm hoping to get the rest of the living room sorted tonight and tomorrow so that um, 
I, I'm, I work a half day tomorrow I'm nine till one tomorrow so in the afternoon I'm going to try and get the other half of the living room sorted out so that we can get the, we can get the decorations down at the weekend and hopefully decorate I have form for decorating very very late but we're not very good at taking them down so we tend to be like the Christmas seasons December and into January we tend to be mid-December into late January we're, we're a bit rubbish at getting them taking them down so that's that that's what I've been doing that's my projects not done very much bar my finish which I was I just could, I couldn't stop I just loved it so much I just kept going once I once I'd stitched the bunny I was halfway up his ears and ears and I thought I'm not stopping I'm just finishing him tonight so my my patchwork deer which what I was going to smooth I was going to do half of that and then move to the patchwork deer which no out the window so I thought I'd show you my Anzac, which Long Dog Leap Day Sal, which is two martini stitchers idea to do, uh, to stitch a long dog in four years. So we started on Leap Day this year and it runs to Leap Day in four years time. Um, except I usually stitch on my Pilgrim because that was my first and I'd only just started it. It had a thousand stitches in it. And at the time I thought that was really hard. Yeah, I've done quite a lot of it now, but this month I swapped out because I needed to get and needed to get some progress on Anzac. So last time when I showed you it in Floss Tube 10, it was about there. So I did come right across, there's the corner. So this fabric I have trimmed, <laughs> this one's trimmed and started down here there is a mistake somewhere but it's only one stitch and I'm just finding here and there I am one stitch adrift but I'm not gonna break my heart over one stitch because I know there's like a eight or nine stitch fault over here but I'll get back to that I'm coming down this side I'm gonna fill in Australia I'm probably not going to move the cue snap now I'm just gonna come down the side so I've got my border down the side I'm gonna finish this guy here he's a He's a, a lizard here. There's his, there's his face. He needs some backstitch. So anything that's touching the circle. So like this chicken here who's sitting on it and the mouse who's sitting on it and these three stars and anything touching it or outside and this, this little bush baby type thing. I'm not too sure what its real name is. Anybody from Australia who knows? Let me know. Um, is, uh, is in the blue grouper. And then anything inside the bubble and the boat and the and the like the, the that bit at the perimeter of the bubble is in down under blues dinky dies this is a 36 36th count so i am using one strand of dinky dye silk which makes them go a very long way which is really good i absolutely love this piece and i'm really pleased to have made some progress i did this great big starburst here so that was just about because it's counting in pattern keeper just about 2000 stitches there that i put in on the 29th and i might have done a few in on the on the 30th but i think mostly by the 30th i was stitching these frames so i thought i'd show you that but i'm i'm not going to put it away i might just put a few sneaky stitches in it here and there when i fancy because you can put a length of a length of, of thread in there and it's great it's really quick I'll just pop that over there so I don't I don't lose it because things do get lost in this house right um, two things came from Amazon Christmas presents but these were not Christmas presents these were for me um, I have bought myself a floss box this is a proper branded art bin one which are pretty good actually they're pretty sturdy this is for the better to see you with it should hold all of the floss for that so I can start bobbinating now for my Christmas present stroke Christmas start so that came in the post that was on it wasn't a Black Friday uh, deal or anything it just had uh, two or three pounds off it so I grabbed it quick it's proper art bin made in the USA hmm lots of plastic stuff that was made in China I'd rather buy US or British to be fair I'd rather buy British but you know US is fine too um, this is made in China and I bought this 
it's a bias tape maker. Now I make bias tape, as you know, to go round the sides of my bags rather than do the folding folding method. So I already have that one and that one proper um, hemline, which is like a brand that does um, uh, all sewing paraphernalia in the UK. That's one of the big the big brands. You know, if you're going to Hobbycraft or um, the range, that's the brand they they carry. My little boy's coming up the stairs. He's off school because a little boy in his year group bubbles Hello. family Hello. have all tested positive. The little boy hasn't, but all his family have. So they, to be extra doubly safe and sure, they've pulled the entire year group and put them on COVID watch, whichever you call it. He is in isolation. He's not allowed to leave the house. He hasn't left the house and he is not unwell. He is now in the window where he would be exhibiting symptoms had he picked it up and wasn't asymptomatic. He is as bright as a button and he's eight and a half and he is at home and bored. And he's running around the house looking for the little cat. So yeah, what I bought this pack for. Now I saw it flashed up on my Instagram and it was like, oh, Black Friday sale reduced to £16 something for this kit. And I thought, okay i know what i buy these for they're about three pounds each so mm, that's quite a lot of money for a pack like that so i for you know chinese knockoffs um so i i looked on amazon and i picked up this not in any black friday sale it was uh six pounds and what i bought it for is for this the machine foot do do there and now this is a machine foot which you undo this swim undo the the screwy thing to the width of your bias tape and then you feed your bias tape into it and then the machine it's got a folder it's got a little folder here so I, and then it sews it feels where it is and it sews so i'm really hoping i can sew the bias tape on super neatly that's what i'm aiming for so I bought a little cheapy just to see if it works and if it if it does brilliant it came with a whole four wonder clips I've got like 300 of these guys and a little tiny box of pins they'll go in my pin cushion always useful all my pins all the colors come off the top and it came with an awl a pointed stick that is going to be incredibly useful I'm kind of glad I have that an awl so I thought I'd show you those. They came with some of my kids' Christmas presents. Yeah, if you see things flash up on Instagram, always have a little look on Amazon because it was literally the same pack and £10 cheaper than buying from somebody else on the internet. It wasn't like I was depriving a, a small business because it, it, it wasn't. Um, it was just another internet seller. So the mighty Amazon wins again. So I've got that, so I'm going to give it a go and see if I can machine my um, bias tape on much neater. And the only other thing I thought I'd show you is an idea I've had. Now, I've been, I might have mentioned that we've been buying, we've been going to the auction house before we went back into lockdown. And but Robin looks for old tools, which he refurbishes either to keep to use himself. He's very into hand planing. And things so he looks for old tools old chisels things that he can of saws he refurbishes saws and does the teeth on them and resells them anyway that's what we go for and while he was looking at tools I mooched around and found boxes of craft stuff um, and in amongst the craft stuff I, I got I did win a couple of boxes and my box was not expensive and my eldest daughter brands it dead people stuff and yes it is it's from house clearances and it's desperately sad but this lady had so much craft stuff and her family obviously didn't want it and well, what can we do we can repurpose and reuse can't we now this was in there and i 
have to show you. It's embroidery. It smells a little, a little old, but the date, and this is this is from the days where you got you, there was there was no internet, obviously, um, and what you did was you pulled out, uh, you clipped a coupon out of a magazine. You clip the coupon out of the magazine and you sent it off with your cheque and they sent you a project. It says, beautiful linen and lace for your table from only £2.65 post paid pure Irish linen tablecloths and napkins in matching squares. OK, and she picked pack B. It came from Belfast, so it definitely came from Ireland, so it might as well be Irish linen. Pack B makes a tablecloth 53 inches square. It was £6.15. I'll tell you the date in a second. This isn't the sort of thing you could buy for £6.15. Postage paid. The postage would be £6.15 now. It comprises 16 12 inch squares of natural coloured linen, nine yards of insertion lace. Um, one and a half inches wide and six and a half yards of edging lace, one and a quarter inch wide, a multi-print transfer of the two embroidery motifs and full working instructions. So you can see from the lady and what how she's dressed that we are talking 1970s here. Look at her. She's stitching in her beautiful, probably handmade dress. So the date on this Oh, there's, there's half an article. I better not read that because I'll never be able to read the other half of it. <laughs> oh, she's written on it. It's before I was born. I'm 44. There's the tablecloth. Now you can see where the insertion lace goes. She's written on it February 17th, 75. That's a year and a half before I was born. There we go. That's the middle sized cloth made from pack B. That's what I have, pack B. Look at that lovely 70s table setting. Lots of grapes and some wine and some butter in a dish because that's what we did. We had butters because we didn't have flies in the 70s, did we? We just put open butter in a dish. OK, so this was from Women's Own, which is a ladies magazine, 1975. So, yes, Women's Own, January 11th, 1975. There's the order coupon. You could order, you could order the embroidery floss. There's the pattern. And there's the other ones. There's two motifs. And anybody else remember carbon motifs? I used to look through my grandma's pack of carbon motifs. So these are the carbon motifs, which you put upside down and you draw on them. Sometimes you could iron them on. And sometimes you had to draw, trace it with a pencil to transfer it onto your linen. And then from bins, look at the paper bag. Gosh, we miss paper bags. See, they're coming back in now and they're all trendy to have paper bags. We always used paper bags. I've got two of these paper bags and in them is three colourways. Bear in mind, these anchor stranded are older than I am and they are they look in better nick than I do. There we go. Those are the three colours she picked. So three colours of pink, but they're nice pinks. They're not they're not Barbie pinks, they're they're quite nice, actually really nice colours. So I've got two bags. There's the other pack. So I've got lots and lots of the, the colours. She she went and bought quite a lot of them. Bear in mind, these single single brand new anchors in the UK, 80p, 90p. So I've got a whole bag of them, a couple in there, and 12 linen squares, 12 inch squares. Some of them are finished. I think that's one of the only finished ones. And so she's done 
different she's put different bits in different places Ooh, this one's finished but the the carbon paper's a bit smudgy on that one I'll have to give that one a little bit of a wash and see if that comes out so yeah quite a lot of them are finished and then there's a few that are started that's actually got a needle in it rusty needle in it fantastic and then there's some the ones with the smaller motif are all marked but haven't been stitched so I've got 12 of these was it 12 or 16 I did just read it out my brain honestly I can't retain numbers for more than like 10 seconds brains like smush and then at the bottom of the packs this this that's the border lace And this is the insertion lace. This isn't cheap Chinese lace. This is 45 year old, nicely produced, pure cotton. Couldn't be anything but pure cotton. Oh, it's beautiful. Must, must, it must be pure cotton. If that's, if that's pure linen, this has to be cotton. Look at it, isn't it lovely? That's been properly made. I'd be stunned if that was made anywhere but in the UK, actually. And I've got a bundle that size. So, what am I going to do with these? First off, I'll finish the unfinished ones. And I'll salvage every single one that I can. Because some of them, I say, as I say, are a little bit smudgy and need a bit of a wash. And I use... An 11 by 11 Q snap. If that's not the front of a square project bag for an 11 by 11 Q snap, I don't know what is. So I need to get some fabrics, some fabrics that coordinate with these colours, some patterns, and I'm going to try and make. I've already trying to. I'm already thinking of a square project bag to put my to put my 11 by 11s in but look at these guys I mean would, what would have happened if the family hadn't sent them to auction would have, they have ended up in the bin it's amazing and the quality is fantastic because these are 45 years old this isn't save the stitches this is this is you know flax and emergency kind of situation I just honestly I opened I opened this tatty old envelope and was just, I was just gobsmacked. <laughs> I've got quite. She did this a lot. She cut out her coupons and she sent off for her, for her embroidery projects. I've got several. That's just the first one I thought I'd, I'd share. <laughs> so I can see a project bag with the pinks, and insertion lace, and a nice zip at the top, and a nice, nice pocket and I'll put a pocket on the back with probably a little zip on it so that you can put your 11 by 11 Q snap in it because that's you know these these things just roam around and I really want to be able to stash them away neatly I'm actually going to make myself I'm planning to make myself like a three pocketed 11 by 11 and make it rigid put plastic in it to make it rigid that will stock my three Q snaps in so whatever projects I've got on, they're not just lying because Eric's got a habit of sitting on them and getting them a bit hairy. So I thought I'd share that with you. And that's another endless project for my brain to try and sort itself around. I'm a sometimes never person. You know, I get around to things eventually. The fact that I finished stitching is blowing my mind because it's really not me. It's really not me. So there we go. thought I'd share that with you. And things I find around my house, things I find at auction. I mean, that huge big box was literally nothing. It cost me nothing. In fact, one of the other things, I'll just get them, they're just there. In fact, I can promise you that this that was in the box, look at this beautiful old box, seven inch pinking shears, which I've been using 
these are heavy proper old-fashioned pinking shears they're cast completely the handles are cast and painted black they just just buying a pair of pinking shears would have been three times more than I paid for the box and they were just in the box I do have a pair of modern pinking shears that I use all the time now I have a spare pair because I'm always losing them <laughs> I'm gonna keep them in their gorgeous box but it's like a treasure trove you don't know what you're gonna find in someone else's stuff that some family member hasn't valued but I value it and I'm gonna use everything <laughs> There was a whole pot of hair clips, you know, um, like Kirby grips and things to hold hold your bun in and things. I just distributed them straight away to my children. You just, you just use them all the time. They've got long hair and they, they put it to one side and put two, two clips in it there. You know, we cross the clips so that they lock all day. Two of them do that. So they just took the hair clips and they're being used. So we're using up what's there, someone else's stuff. And... I hope she's looking down and going, oh, someone's actually going to use my things. How lovely, because she obviously didn't pass them on to anybody, which is kind of a shame. But I'm not surprised in this day and age. It's not many people like us, is there? Um, right, this video's run a bit long. I'm not going to tackle my floss box of doom, but just to lay your minds at rest. This, this is post floss tube. That was pre floss tube. This is it is scruffy, I know, because I've been I've been going quick. This is post floss tube. Okay, so I'm not I'm not rummaging endlessly in that doom pocket. When I'm rummaging in the doom pocket, I'm looking for little bits to um, do some, you know, just to put a few stitches in a random project if I'm doing full coverage or something that requires DMC, I have that. <laughs> I'm, I, it, it shortens my process substantially, the fact that I have, and that's almost all of my DMC. There is a bag of fancy threads, but if I'm, once I've pulled and sorted what I'm doing for a project, they then go in the bag with the project. So, or they're in a little bag with the project, or they're, they're sitting in a bundle on my bed. My bed is my, works at the station basically um so yeah i've run long again hope you don't mind but i think that's me done for today so please comment and anyone who comments today commented yesterday or commented on the first video after i put all the little hearts i'll write i'm gonna write names down so if you commented yesterday please comment again today because i'll I'm just going to say, right, there was three comments there, 30 comments there, 12 comments there, and I'll random for the whole number. And I'm going longhand. I'm writing your names out as I read the comments and put the little heart by it to say, yep, yeah, you're in, you're in, you're in. The only person who won't win is the lady here. This is in the post to you today, Mrs. It's on its way. I'll be going out in half an hour to go to the post office so that's going to be in in in, in the postage system today and yes and also um mrs batstitch crazy i'm posting yours today as well so hopefully that'll be with you really soon and uh we'll stitch nantucket rose together brilliant okie doke i'll see you tomorrow guys thank you so much again for watching and uh yeah i'll make a video about my floss box because it scares me too and I'm not sure how it got that tangled because it didn't used to be that tangled, but there didn't used to be as much in there. Um, I think it's got something to do with Eric and possibly my middle daughter because we all dip into the... Eric steals things. He's a bad cat. But, um, right. I've already said goodbye once. I'll say goodbye again. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye. It's not stopping. Hi guys, sorry, forgot. It's hours and hours and hours and hours later. Just, I'm just editing the video and I realised I didn't show this for today. This is number, this is day three. So add it on <laughs> towards the grand prize. Oh, duh, sorry about that.
I'll catch you tomorrow. Bye-bye.